Hey everybody, Chad Westport here, and I wanted to make a video today to explain the difference between a white paper and a proper scientific research paper, because there's absolutely a difference between the two, yet they commonly are intermingled and confused as the same thing. So I want to break this down, and real quick, let's define what a white paper is. A white paper is an informal document, usually issued by a company or a not-for-profit organization to promote or highlight the features of a solution product or service that it currently offers or that it plans to offer. Um, an example of that is a lot of the research that you see on lighting companies websites. Obviously, their research seems to always support their concept that their spectrum is the best. So white paper generally holds bias. A scientific paper is defined as a written report describing original research results whose format has been defined by centuries of tradition, editorial practices, and scientific ethics. As such, they are critical to the evolution of modern science, in which the work of one scientist builds upon that of the others. I'm going to be doing a series called High Science. Scientific research papers are what it's going to be based upon, not white papers. Here's, here's kind of my little checklist of things that you need to be aware of, and I'll expand on them here in a second. But these are the things you need to know in order to ascertain if it's a good paper to be putting a lot of weight into. So one, is it peer reviewed? If it is peer reviewed, by whom, how many people, and what are their positions in the field? Um, another thing, who are the authors? Who do they work for? Are there any potential conflicts of interests? Speaking of that, who funded the study? Who published it? And what is the bias of this publication? Another thing, when was the study published? Obviously, we're looking for more current information than older information in most cases. An important thing, who is citing the paper? If it's good work, people are going to be citing it. A lot of these papers have big words, so grab your dictionary. Don't be afraid. Look them up. And does this study use plants similar to cannabis? Super important, not a ton of cannabis specific studies out there. And I'll tell you how to kind of get around that as well. Uh, and then my favorite part is use the references, man. That is your rabbit hole of information to learn more about the subject. So let's, let's begin here. Of the utmost important to me is that a research paper in question has been peer reviewed. And what that means in the scientific community is that the findings have been reviewed and confirmed independently from more than one accredited person or group. This mechanism is the checks and balances of the scientific community, but it is often not part of the white paper process. And like I said, you know, anybody can create a paper, but the findings need to be reproducible. And this is what the peer review process is designed to do. If it's not peer reviewed, generally I skip it. Who are the authors of the study? This can sometimes lead to an obvious bias, like when the author of a paper touting the benefits of eating red meat is also working for the National Cattle Ranchers Association, you might be getting some biased information, but don't rule it out. Again, guys, open mind, critical thinking, super important. And the reason I say that is in that case, a lot of times the information that they're giving you it may not be wrong, but the facts that they're choosing to put in there could be hand selected in order to create the narrative that best serves the author's purpose. And don't think that doesn't happen because it absolutely can. Again, you're trying to root out bias before you put a lot of stock into what the paper's telling you. Uh, any good research paper is going to have a section at the end titled Conflict of Interest. Uh, and the example above kind of illustrates the potential. And in the name of good science, this section is included to disclose any potential hits of bias. While a conflict of interest may exist, that doesn't automatically invalidate the findings of any particular study. At the same time, look who funded the study as you know all the movies say follow the money um but you know this can also raise red flags to the quality of information being expressed or hint at a potential bias many companies don't fund studies that disprove the quality of their products or their ideas generally they're only funding research that will support their opinion again going back to the hand selecting or cherry picking information in which to present you 
Sound familiar, NIDA? National Institute of Drug Abuse. Another story. Uh, but we're rapidly gaining new knowledge about cannabis. And thanks to a relaxation of laws and regulations surrounding studying this plant and the chemical profile, countries like Israel and Spain are leading the way with new medicinal research. But many more are interested in the internal workings of cannabis. And that is what we're trying to figure out here, because oftentimes we're trying to maximize our efficiency and ultimately yields. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, look for something new. It's important to look at the date of the published paper. You, you may be looking at one that eh, could be disproven by now, or it could be adjusted with new evidence, or it could simply be studied further. The majority of cannabis specific papers will generally be from 1990s up until now. Um, but, you know, don't count out older ones. THC was discovered in 1963. So we know just because a research paper is old doesn't mean that it's invalid. But one thing is constant over time, and that's new technology. We often have better ways to measure and calculate findings compared to the past. And for this reason, I always, again, encourage people to seek out the most recent studies that they can find. Oftentimes, if older research is valid in the eyes of the new author, again, go back to the definition of scientific paper, the new author, that old work will be included, it will be cited, and it will be listed in the reference area at the end of each study. This is a good way to build confidence in the information that's getting provided to you. So to kind of summarize, facts can be cherry picked. They can be selectively used to support the opinion of the author. Another mechanism to check the quality of paper's content is to see where, by whom, and how many times it has been cited in other research. And cited means quoted as evidence or justification of an argument or statement, especially in scholarly text. So it's important not only for the current offer to cite research supporting their findings, but it's equally important to see how many other professionals in the field are citing this new work that you are now putting stock into. Now that you know how to measure the validity of a white paper or a research paper, and that you know the difference between the two, there are still a few more things that you should know about. All the big words, ladies and gentlemen, do yourself, grab a dictionary, look them up. If you keep seeing the same word, you know, often more and more frequently or in the context, you get an importance to it. Make sure you look it up, write it down, don't need to know them all, but again, the more you read, the more familiar you'll get with these terms. Um, another thing, too, that <laughs> definitely makes a difference, uh, since a lot of these plant studies do not include cannabis, uh, this presents an issue. There are many types of plants, grasses, herbaceous plants, woody shrubs, trees, vascular, non-vascular, seed-bearing, spore-bearing, angiosperm, gynosperms. There's a whole bunch of crap out there, ladies and gentlemen. So, Make sure that you're looking at a plant that is similar to cannabis and the way the scientific order or classification of plants, fancy word is taxonomy, um, but the way that runs is kingdom, division, which is sometimes called phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, and species. And, you know, cannabis isn't fully locked into this because there's always going to be some debate, but generally kingdom, it's plantea. Division, angiosperm, class, eudicot, order, rosalis, uh, urticlean, rosids. Don't sue me for pronunciation here. Um, family, and this is, you know, this is the one that you want to find plant studies for. Family is cannabacea, uh, genus, cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, cannabis ruderalis. So the point of mentioning this is that you don't want to look for research for a plant that is not in the same family, since the studies on this particular genus are few and far between. If you can find a study on cannabis, cool. If you can't, look for studies in the Cannabacea family. And now one of my favorite parts of these papers, I call it the rabbit hole, but it's also known as the reference section. And this is where all of the citations from the current author's work is listed. Uh, these are the backbone that support the author's position. And here you can view the individual studies and get a deeper understanding of the individual points made in the current paper. Again, it's the backbone, it's the legs that they're standing on. Proper research will have dozens of references at the end, and this is where your rabbit hole of knowledge begins for any particular subject at hand. 
again, you can just go down that rabbit hole. Try it sometime. Reference Sexton. Awesome. I hope this has provided you with a guide for how to discern the quality of information you are receiving from the many educational papers going around. It will be many more years and even decades before we have a complete understanding of the cannabis plant. But that doesn't mean we need to wait around and wonder. So get out there, do some research on similar plants, and hopefully we can unlock the mysteries of our friend, the cannabis plant. And now you know the difference between a white paper and a research paper, and you know the things you need to look at to weigh its validity to the conversation. So I appreciate your time tonight. I hope this helps some people out. And uh, remember, party on. Ah, oh.